Can't do no wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Seth, thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah. Everybody, Seth, loveless, so handsome. Can't do no wrong, <laughs> dude. That was sick. What? Was, who, yeah. What? So that? What was that song right there that you just? That played? was his song called "Windy and Warm," and I believe it was composed by uh, John D. Loudermilk, and uh, it was made famous by Chet Atkins. Old oh, Chet. Oh Chet. Oh Chet. Yeah. This guy. Can strum, he can sum, he can do it all. He di <laughs> slices, dices, does his text for you, everything. <laughs> Seth is amazing. One of the greatest pickers I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I mean it, dude. Yeah, yeah nobody it. plays. This guy is, <laughs> is next level. It's insane. Let's double check these mics real quick. Coming up there. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Check. How about yours? How's yours coming up? Uh, hello. There it goes, right there. There we okay. go. Yeah. Got it. Yes. Okay. Seth, thanks for being on the show today. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of questions, especially as a guitarist. I want to be picking your brain. Oh, boy. As much as I can. <laughs> we're going to we, go down that rabbit hole. Then we're going to go down <laughs> this rabbit hole today. Um, so we got this. I'm just going to throw the. That always freaks the guests out. Uh, yeah. Done. Uh, no, when did you start playing? When did you start playing guitar? I started playing guitar when I was 12 years old. About 12 going on 13 mm -hmm. is when I first picked it up. And I went over to my uh, my grandfather. And um, I was really obsessed with Johnny Cash at the time, and yeah. and I sang him the song Folsom Prison, and he's like, oh, "I'll do you one better. I'll show you the guitar chords to it." Cause my my grandfather picks a little bit, and he kind of showed me the little uh -huh. to Folsom Prison, and yeah, then yeah. and then. Uh, oh. And that's what I was doing for the longest time. You know, he kind of showed me that rhythm. And then, then I came back the next day and I could play and sing it at the same time, you know, with the thumb. And he must have been like, oh, he likes it. Okay, yeah, he's yeah. Start so playing. then for my 13th birthday, he's like, okay, we'll get him a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. That's, I feel like such a big time when you, when you try to figure out what you're going to, not what you're going to do for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. but like a big hobby or like a passion yeah. for, that can stick around for the rest of your life. That's awesome. What kind of guitar did you have? Oh, and my first uh, uh, little guitar was a Sigma, which is by Martin. Okay. It was like a little acoustic electric guitar. That was my first guitar. And then my first uh, my first electric guitar was a Gibson SG. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then my second electric guitar is this Fender Telecaster, this it's custom. Beautiful. Ooh, it's so good. <laughs> I love there's no pick guard or anything. It's yeah, so, yeah. They're, they're and it's got a carved top, which most Telecasters don't have a carved top. You mm -hmm. know, they're just they're flat on the back and they're yeah, flat on the top. But this, this one's, one's yeah, kind of like a Les Paul has a carved top. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. It's got it's a voluptuous. Yeah, it's it's like a beautiful <laughs> woman, and you play it so. Yeah, uh, she gets feisty sometimes, you know, like, you know. <laughs> just so yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 come back. So, yeah. Another one. Uh, tell me about your, what, what's your practice routine like? Uh, my practice routine. I get at least about, I would say I average at least like three hours of practice a day, probably, and Dang it's kind of throughout the day. Uh -huh. But uh, when I started playing when I was 12, I didn't, I couldn't put it down, you know. And I was kind of more of a rhythm player strumming and kind of a little bit of finger picking. But when I turned like 15, 
I really got deep into the finger picking, really? and I started practicing eight hours a day. Oh my gosh! You just woke uh-huh. up with a guitar in your hands. I woke up with. I fell asleep with the guitar in my bed all the time. I'd wake up and it'd be there, and I'd just be. I'd be playing it, watching TV. You know, my brothers would be playing video games, and I'd be driving them nuts with. Uh, you know. <laughs> play, yeah. Playing, yeah. yeah. They're like, what? God, yeah. yeah. Please, no more. Yeah, they're trying to play Halo, and I'm over, you know, like picking, <laughs> picking Chet Atkins, and they're like, <laughs> what? What made you gravitate towards Chet specifically? Oh. There's a bunch of different ways you can play the guitar, obviously. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, Num- numerous, you know, different players, different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, st- I started out a rock and roller, and I was totally into Angus Young, and I was trying to, like, you know. Uh, and Angus plays with a pick, and I was trying to play these. Uh, so sorry, dude. <laughs> yeah, go, no, but like, I uh, started out doing that stuff, and I was like trying to finger pick Angus Young licks. And then my grandpa <laughs> saw that I was kind of finger picking, and he's like, "Well, you should check out Chet Atkins," because that was like my grandpa was born 1947, you know, mm-hmm. and Chet Atkins was born 1924. So like when my grandpa was a kid, Chet Atkins was that popular was the guy, on the radio. Yeah. He was the guy. So he. He uh, told me about him, and I went and looked him up on YouTube, and this was right about the time YouTube was born, Mm -hmm. like 2006, you know, so I was like 13, and I just, I went down to Chet Atkins' rabbit hole, and I was like, my focus shifted from Angus Young to like Chet Atkins 100%, you know, and like, and I went down the the finger-picking thing, and then when I went back to the Angus Young ACDC stuff, I realized, oh, I can finger-pick the ACDC stuff, but twice as fast, because I learned, <laughs> you know, because I got more uh, stuff, you know, going on. <laughs> That's so cool. You know, that kind of... Dude, get out of town. <laughs> when you're playing stuff like that with a lick like that, are you yeah. thinking the... Um, is it just muscle memory at this point? Or are you thinking oh, some this of, scale, then into this scale, or this, uh, now I'm going to... The- some of it's muscle memory and licks, but then like, uh, like you know, I know my scales, obviously, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, um, uh, a lot of it, you, I think every guitar player has their go-to licks, yeah, you know, yeah. guilty. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, when I'm playing with a band, you know, like when I'm playing with a drummer or a bass player, I will play kind of off of, they might throw me something rhythmically that might inspire me to play a phrase a certain way. Uh-huh. And then uh, another thing too is like, I, I think in terms of phrasing, which is like, uh, rather than a, like, I'll look at a scale, but I'm thinking like, I'm sing like a lot of times when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I'm like singing in my head. You know, so oh, if you're not like, clapping, I don't know what you're doing. Get out of here, man. You kind of, you know, you if you if you. Uh, I would get in the habit of like singing what I played, and I think that helps you. That teaches you your fretboard better. You know what I mean? That's a good. I've uh, never thought of it that way. I mean, yeah. I I think that's that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. If you sing what you play, then it's like it helps you memorize where the notes are in the fretboard better, and then like you can like you know you can close your eyes. <laughs> And I think when you kind of, I mean, you don't have to sing along with, yeah, <laughs> with you, you play, people will be like, what the hell is going on? What is this guy doing? But, uh, but uh, a lot of Benson? times you're singing in, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of times you're singing in your head, like kind of when you're improvising lead stuff. And yeah. I think that, I think that makes your playing a little more musical rather than just running through muscle memory licks, you that know, could be bad. like, I'm guilty. and yeah. like I, I have my go-to licks, don't get me wrong. And I'll throw them in a, in a spot, like when I. I want to go for the jugular. I'll throw like in a, a flashy kind of lick that I've practiced muscle memory, something like, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like insane. something like yeah. that, you know, and like, and that's kind of like, that's not really phrasing, that's more <laughs> muscle memory <laughs> kind of, yeah, 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 that's like kind of noodling, I guess. I think yeah. I'll throw it in at the end of the song or something, you know. Yeah, like, well, I saw so it the other day, yeah. but every, but that's the thing is every bar had something where it's just like, man, this guy. Just breathe this stuff. Like, <laughs> it feels like an extension. Do you feel like 
the guitar at this point is an, is an extension. Oh yeah, the- yeah, absolutely. And that's what's so cool about the guitar, man. It's like it's it's an extension of who you are, your personality, um, what you listen to. I mean, you know. And I listen to lo- loads of players: Chet Atkins, Jerry Reed, Mark Knopfler, um, Greg Cock, Richard Smith, Tommy Emanuel, Scotty Anderson, Clarence Gatemouth Brown. Mm-hmm. Angus Young, Johnny Winter. I mean, I go all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but know? no, that's good. You get a, uh, your own sound instead of just being like a ripoff of. Oh Chet yeah, or yeah. Angus or, and I, I started Mark. noticing that too. Like when I was like doing all the Chet stuff, I was like, hmm, I better look into some other players because I don't want to sound exactly like Chet as much as I love him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and I and I realized quickly like I'm never going to sound exactly like him. I think every guitar player has a twiddle in their finger that makes them sound like them. Isn't you know? that interesting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. A yeah. Much like a voice or something. Absolutely, else. yeah. No ma- Yeah, everyone's got their own little thing that makes them them. Yeah. And that's what's cool. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I love that part. Yeah, yeah. that make, that's what keeps music exactly. interesting. Yeah, characters. Yes. Yeah. Char- of- I love characters in music. That's yeah. really cool, yeah. man. Uh, for practice routine, you're doing just scales up and down. You're working on songs. Uh, oh, yeah. How do you? What's the intentional part of the practice, or is there an intentional part of the practice? Uh, like um, sometimes I'm practicing to like um, get my hands warm, and you know, like I, you know, there's that saying: if if you don't u- use it, you lose it. Mm-hmm. So I definitely like I want to keep my hands limber, and so I'll kind of run through more exercise kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then if there's something that catches my ear, uh, whatever kind of music, you know, then I'll like learn something like i uh i don't play a lot of bebop jazz live but i love listening to bebop jazz yeah, you yeah. know like dizzy gillespie and and uh and uh barry harris and thelonious monk and then bud powell i was I, you know i'll listen to some of that stuff kind of i'm a bebop jazz nerd at home mm-hmm. even though i don't play a lot of it live yeah <laughs> play more rock and roll and blues yeah, and yeah, country yeah. live but i'll throw in kind of i'll sneak in some, some jazzy stuff, stuff. That you like, yeah. but like i was learning a bud powell tune called uh, Dance to the Infidels, and it was like a... And then it goes... <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, know. dude, no, I'm I, for, I forgot it, but like... Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I'm just escaping my brain right now. But, you know, I'll kind of listen to, like... I'll listen to that stuff, and... Like, so if there's something, you know, uh, specific I, that I want to learn, then I'll go on YouTube and I, uh, YouTube, you can slow down the video and it doesn't change the pitch, you yeah. know? So like, uh, if there's something like, you know, like you slow it down and you, you learn it, you know, note for note and you're kind of getting some, some of the language, so to speak, you know, cause there's, there's a language to like each genre that makes the genre what it is, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, be it bluegrass, be it western string, be it country, be it bebop jazz, be it gypsy jazz. You know, each kind of genre has their own language. Yeah. And you kind of, you learn from these different things, and you, then you kind of start to blend it yeah, yeah, <laughs> into your right. own little gumbo, you Put know? <laughs> yeah, gumbo. yeah, yeah. You know what I love? I hear you talk about all this. Is, um, I'm guilty of, of doing the opposite thing. You just kind of skim the surface of things. I have done some deep dives i'm not saying i'm completely full of shit but uh, yeah. it's really cool to see somebody that genuinely like you love this yeah, yeah. To see it. and it's not <laughs> but it's, it's not trying to fill in some hole or anything either it's just like it's really cool that you have like found this passion and that you're able to take it and reflect it in your own voice yeah, and seemingly appreciate it. in a in a really like uninhibited way. Yeah, yeah. As well, <laughs> and and but and I've interviewed a lot of people, and all the guy, the people that I've had on here have been have been amazing. I've I've really had a good time. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm, really I'm cool sorry to, to people that I'm it. sorry to any of the bebop jazz fans out there that you know <laughs> no. me playing uh, Bud Powell like butchering that. You no, know? Like, I, good, I swear man. I play it better when you know. <laughs> I'm not no, like, under pressure. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no. Red yeah, man. I, I play it more like Jerry Reed would play it, you know. So it's like it's like it's bebop with a country twang on yeah. a telly. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I love it. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I I I just really think that's something that even talking and hearing you talk about it make inspires me to get back into like oh, right making bigger efforts like I used to when I was a little bit younger and just like 
I want to soak up everything. I want to know everything about it. <laughs> and not just so I can just spout off names. Just like, I actually want to, yeah, to yeah. know this stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun, you know. And I, I'm kind of a music nerd for, you know, like, I'll get into something and, like, I'll, like, listen to the, the album. I'm, you know, I love listening to albums from start to finish. Mm-hmm. And, like, uh, you know, I love learning about how they recorded it, how they got the sounds, or whatever, who who played what instrument. You know, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. You Where know? do you do your research for that? Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, the, the Wikipedia, internet, yeah, probably. Wikipedia. You know, even no, though people can t- edit that, that sounds horrible. No, no, no. I didn't <laughs> call it out of, you know, I did like, the same thing. Yeah, I think, well, I have, I think it, people yeah. can edit it, but it's like, I think they they change it if it's it, yeah if yeah it's wrong, if it's wrong if it's false information they they uh, they change it back. I, I remember being a little hooligan and, and yeah, yeah and messing with stuff yeah. and then <laughs> checking back on it later and it was it was not yeah it was good. They, they changed it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, up it's fairly is reliable. <laughs> Seventy two inches tall. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah I, I tried my yeah. best though. That's so funny, man. Uh, let's talk about you got one aspect of it right there, but. If you haven't heard Seth sing, Seth has a phenomenal voice as well. Yeah. How did you develop your your voice? Well, that's another uh, that's another rabbit hole for you. <laughs> Let's jump um, on down, man. We're, we're on yeah. the rabbits. I know Alice. No, <laughs> um, you know, but like, uh, and the Mad Hatter. I am him. No, um, <laughs> but uh, my voice, man. I mean, when I first started singing, like I was thirteen. And, uh, you know, same time I started playing guitar, 12 going on 13, and I wanted to be a Johnny Cash impersonator. And I was very bad at it because (laughs) when you're 13, you know, like you're just starting to hit puberty. (laughs) And, like, you know, your voice is not low enough to do Johnny Cash, you know. But if you're delusional, (laughs) you know, like like I was, you know, you try. But, uh, Uh, yeah, man, I... uh, I first started singing at 13, and then, like, you know, I hit puberty. I, I, I feel like I've gone through, like, two puberties with my <laughs> voice, you know, since then, because it's like, and then I got the, you know, I got the rasp in my voice, and that was probably a lot from, from you know, singing rock and blues, <laughs> that genre of music. Yeah, yeah. I probably, I don't know, damaged my voice. I have no idea, because now it's, like, raspy all the time, but I also had, like, you know, nerve damage, which is partly why my voice is hoarse too, mm-hmm. apart from singing. And yeah. uh, so, and then uh, just, yeah, I never had voice lessons. Uh, just sang all the time and just, you know, increased my vocal range uh, on the low end and the high end, That's you crazy, know, man. by myself. <laughs> you didn't take lessons or anything? No, no lessons for I the, for the singing. Away, no lessons for that. <laughs> When I went to go see you play the other day, you did this thing. Oh, it was with the throat, the frog. Oh yeah, yeah, the oh. throat singing. Yeah. Throat singing, yes. <laughs> um, which if you have, I I'm gonna be honest. I I, I went back home, driving back home, and I was trying to do it. I was like, but I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, I figured out I could do that one day, and and like, uh, and it was on that song and got no home. Yeah. Buddy, buddy of mine introduced me to that song, and uh, the version I learned was by the band. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a line in the song where the frog sings. So I was like, oh, I can utilize my throat singing in yeah, this yeah. song, and it works, you know, to sound kind of like the frog. You it's know? insane. <laughs> it, it really was. I remember when you did. I was just like, what is going? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, <laughs> that was such a good you, man. You put it on, man. You put it on. Yeah, that's for sure. Man. So who would you say is the best of oh. the guitars? Who, if you're gonna, oh, uh, maybe for different reasons as well. If you're gonna take, yeah, and that's, choose different. Parts that's a different. hard. I know that's thing, a, that's a tough. man. But like, you know, like I definitely like I mean, for me my biggest influences are definitely like Chet Atkins, mm-hmm. Jerry Reed, uh Lenny Burrow, Scotty Anderson, Richard Smith, who I'm friends with. No way. Tommy Manuel. And uh yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Greg Cock, another guy I love. Yeah, yeah. But, like, they're all great in their own way. But, you know, it's it's kind of funny, like, because there's, there's a... See, Chet was influenced by a guitar player named Merle Travis. Okay. And he was a thumb picker. And Merle played with his thumb and his index finger. Okay. And uh, Merle Travis composed this tune called Cannonball Rag. And he played it like this. Now, 
the difference cool. between Merle and Chet is kind of the grooves in their thumb. Uh-huh. So here's how Chet would maybe play it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the thumb's going all over the place. So Dude, like that's crazy. Which is it's kind of funny because like Merle kind of. Uh, there was a guitar player named Doyle Dykes who was talking to Merle Travis, and he said that Merle described himself as a honky tonk piano player on guitar, where Chet was more of a stride piano player on guitar. Okay, like honky tonk, you know, it's more boom, bock, 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 boom, just really stomping, you know, and heavy on that groove. And then yeah, yeah. Chet's a little more stride, is a little more articulate and refined, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little softer, you know, smoother. Yeah. So that's kind of the difference between between Chet and Merle. And then then Jerry Reed come along, and Jerry Reed was influenced by both Chet and Merle. And then okay. he would get a little more funkier and dig in. So if Jerry Reed was gonna play Cannibal Rag, it'd probably be like. I'm in heaven right now. This is so cool. Especially so, to be, you can't see it. I'm just like looking <laughs> over his shoulder watching yeah. him play and going like, I don't so even know. So there's there's doing. differences in, in how they play grooves and stuff, you know. And then uh, and uh, then Chet would do these amazing licks like a... You know, something like that. You know, and like uh, I learned that kind of stuff from Chet, and then Jerry, I got these kind of banjo roll kind of techniques. And the other cool thing about Jerry is that Jerry would also kind of approach the guitar like a piano, and he would have these moving bass lines with these melodies going places. He he uh, came up with this tune called Mr. Lucky which he composed for Chet, and it kind of... Dang, dude, that's tasty. Going on <laughs> to do the 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 bass the the, the yeah it's fall, like the, the bass is walking going somewhere while you got, you this, got melody. this melody it's like yeah top. like yeah. this counterpoint kind of stuff <laughs> you know this thing's going one way and the other thing's going that way <laughs> that's yeah. kind of Jerry would do that kind of stuff you know it has like this kind of like a drum almost thing you know yeah. this limb is not thinking about what this limb is yeah, doing but yeah. you're doing it there's with your fingers there's that independence yeah. yeah yeah there's independence between the thumb and the uh, index and middle fingers do you yeah. remember a time I remember playing Bold as Love by Hendrix mm-hmm. and then being able to finally take the chords and break them down a little bit I'm not I'm still not yeah. anywhere crazy but and I was like oh I can launch off of this into this part and I can arpeggiate that part and I remember being like yeah. I remember that very well. I don't yeah, know yeah. What that's like open your like. brain up. It was like, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, mind blown. One Do of those moments. Do you remember moments. a time like that where you're just like, oh, oh yeah. Man, I was there was, uh, uh, I learned a couple of like simple finger picking pieces that weren't really uh, Chet Atkins uh, tunes. I learned like Blackbird and my uh, guitar teacher, Katie Cage, uh, she taught me. Uh, Taught me some theory and a li- and like kind of taught me a few tunes and stuff and yeah. like some scales and things like that. But a lot of my finger picking techniques, the Chet Jerry stuff, I learned by myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, she taught me like Blackbird, you know, yeah. and like uh, and, and you know Paul McCartney, yeah. you know, and like and then Dust in the Wind and kind of yeah. your simple kind of you know like finger picking stuff. But then like but then like I'd like. I went and learned uh, this Jerry Reed tune called Jerry's Breakdown. 
Okay. And that was like a game changer for me. That really? was like that opened my brain up into some technical stuff, and and that was uh, f- God. Something like that, and then That's it goes. Insane. like that was the first piece that was like Damn. that gave me some like, like some technical stuff and that yeah. kind of opened up uh, a door <laughs> you know that was a wow moment you see yeah the, uh, that that part there's one section up uh and it did have this kind of like blackboard oh uh, yeah this section yes although that that corner are so tasty This is just a random question. Do you know if McCartney was inspired by some of these? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the Beatles, man, they were totally influenced by like uh, Chet Atkins. I mean, mm-hmm. they obviously listened to like Buddy Holly and the Crickets and I, Elvis I and stuff that, like and that. And Barry and, oh, and yeah, all that. Yeah. But, but like, uh, especially on a Blackbird. But George you Harrison, you can totally and yeah, like on Blackbird, you could kind of hear how like Chet Atkins' guitar style probably influenced a lot of their yeah. chord progressions mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. and their melodies and yeah. things like that and finger picking. You know, like maybe they didn't groove quite like Chet did, but definitely the chord progressions for sure. And then George Harrison, the he had a Gretsch Country Gentleman Chet Atkins model guitar, so and that's what he played. In the, that's, that's what he played in the sixties. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um, man, oh, I'm just <laughs> incredible, incredible. If you were going to give somebody some homework to do on Jerry Reed, where would you get them to start? Oh, you man. To to? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry I did not prep you with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, uh, man. For some of his more like, you know, like some of the stuff where he's got like uh, kind of the walk and bass stuff and kind of the piano-esque guitar playing, I would say tunes like Mr. Lucky and like Swing in 69 and Stump Water. Uh-huh. You know, like for like some cool inversions and stuff where you got like moving bass lines and, mm-hmm. and melodies up high. But then for like the fast, crazy picking tunes, Jerry's Breakdown, obviously, yes, that would be like, seriously. that's yeah. like, you know, like uh, you got to, if you're a Jerry Reed fan, you got to try and tackle that song. Uh-huh. You know, that's like, you just got to. <laughs> yeah, it's man, it's you got to try. You got to try. You got to, you got to, you got to try. Give it your best. Yeah, yeah. Jerry, you know, I still, I still like. <laughs> I'm praying when yeah, I play. Play. <laughs> when, you know. I promise, I yeah. promise, we better. Yeah, Jerry's break. Yeah, and then like for another fast stuff, like Jerry's breakdown, lightning rod, the uh, the Mad Russian is another one he did. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, very timely. Those cool, cool tunes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's so cool, man. Dang, what about for Chet? For Chet, oh, definitely like uh, his uh, version of Mr. Sandman is awesome. Mm-hmm. Windy and warm. Uh, and then Chet could also play these um, beautiful, like, kind of ballad-esque tunes. You know, he played, like, uh, Don McLean's Starry, Starry Night instrumentally. Oh Very beautiful. Yeah. And then uh, for, like, fast tunes for Chet, uh, for some of his fast wizardry, I would, like, check out Cascade mm-hmm. and Blue Angel. Mm-hmm. And some of these tunes Chet didn't compose, but they were his interpretations, yeah, yeah. you know? And, uh, but, yeah. For like the fast stuff, Cascade and Blue Angel are like awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, those Very are great, cool, great tunes. I love it. That's incredible. How about for Mark? For Mark Knopfler, that's another guy. So Mark oh. Knopfler, he was influenced by Chet and uh, and blues pickers. And the thing with that, with guys like Chet and Jerry, you know, Chet and Jerry had the thumb pick in the nails. Mark Knopfler doesn't use a thumb pick. 
Uh-huh. And he doesn't have fingernails. He's no. just bare thumb, bare mm. finger. And that gives, gives a, a different tone over all. Yeah. yeah, it gives a different tone. So like with the thumb pick and the nails, you get a little more clarity and articulation. You know? Yeah, yeah. Everything and then with the nice flesh, bite. you get more like kind of a percussive thing. Mm-hmm. I hear it. Yeah, yeah. You check, know? Check that out. And then, like, you know. Whoa. kind of the mark thing you know with yeah. the, you get you definitely get more of the mark sound when you use the bare flesh and the bare fingertips you know i'm like even though i got my nails i'm i'm like avoiding trying to get them on <laughs> the side of it get yeah. more of the side of my flesh to get more of that mark sound uh-huh. and then if you like use a, a fender strat <laughs> then you're gonna sound you, you know fender strat with kind of a clean tone you maybe some compression then you're gonna sound like dire straight salt yeah, and swing right yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like right in the ballpark <laughs> you know when you were playing that it, it, i heard some eddie van halen stuff in there too i wonder oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she pulled from uh from else, I, like yeah same time, yeah so. i've heard that well i heard that eddie van halen he said his biggest influence was like Eric Clapton, I guess, but to me, when I hear, interesting, I yeah, yeah, they don't, either. they don't. I would have, yeah, I would have never guessed. Yeah, okay. but like uh, to me, when I hear Eddie Van Halen, I'm like, I, I think more like Jeff Beck, and like you know, like maybe he pulled more from Jeff more Beck. Of that. Yeah, See, that more of that. Yeah, because it's more experimental. Yeah, feeling, yeah, you more. Know? You know, and Jeff Beck did a lot of that, like kind of that kind of. That kind yeah, of stuff, really you know, and you could see like where Eddie would like. Where he's tapping with that as well. Yeah, because so, Jeff would do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And Jimmy Page, too. He would do that. I could see that. I could see the Page. Yeah. Uh, I, had, I heard this song by Jeff Beck the other day. It was on the movie Casino. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, he's amazing. I love Jeff. Oh, uh, what's it called? It's not super. No. Maybe it's super. I, I ain't it? superstitious. That's what it's called. Have you heard that one by? <laughs> I haven't. No. I didn't know. I was just like, this song's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, he's and got some of... great instrumental tunes, and then like he does that uh, Stevie Wonder song because we've ended as lovers. He does that instrumentally. He's super know, known I for that. that one, yeah. Plays and he also plays like Sleepwalk, which that was a tune by Santo and Johnny mm-hmm. that was played like I think on lap steel guitar. Yeah, but he he plays that on electric guitar. Incredible. He also does a killer version of. A Day in the Life by the Beatles. No way. Ah, that's worth that's worth checking out. I'm gonna out. be streaming that right after. We're Je- Jeff Beck, man, he that guy's just a monster. Yeah, dude. he's his tone's amazing. Um, okay, let's change gears. Let's talk about your releases. We're talking about influences for for a minute. Uh, like in the last four months, you've been cranking it out. Yeah, yeah, man. You yeah, yeah. You just dropped out. Teasing people with singles. Teasing people. <laughs> they're, they're great singles, man. Yeah, they're appreciate great. it. You just dropped Now I Know, and that was just, it was just a few weeks ago, yeah. a couple weeks ago when I wrote that up. That song, <laughs> Barber, man, it is just thumpy. It hits it. If you haven't checked it out, you got to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, that one, man. I wrote yeah, that, I uh, that riff... Uh, I was inspired by my bass player Forrest, his first girlfriend. They had a breakup and whatnot, and that's kind of what inspired that song. Sorry, Forrest. <laughs> I don't know if he's watching, but probably not. But like, he he loves me, I think. <laughs> like, but that inspired that song, and uh, oh man, kind of. I recorded that on this Telecaster. I recorded the uh, riff. You know, I recorded that riff on this Fender Telly through the Fender Princeton reverb amp. I love the clean uh, clean tone it's got in the reverb. And then uh, mm-hmm. for the lead, I went for like uh, kind of a Mark Knopfler meets but with a Billy Gibbons bite. Okay, you know, see that, yeah. With the, like clean, but with the dirt and the reverb. And I plugged into this uh, Fender Tone Master head and cab 
and that was owned by Curtis. I'm probably going to butcher his last name. Curtis Grip, Grippy Curtis. He has this um, studio called STEM in Paradise Valley. Okay. Amazing studio. Yeah, yeah. Curtis is awesome. Love that guy. Yeah. And that's his head and cab. And like when I plugged the Telecaster into that, I was like, oh, oh that sounds that's good. that's the lead tone. <laughs> this is it right you know, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that built in. It was like a hand wired custom no fender way. 90s head and cab it was awesome that's a dream right there man. yeah i mean i wouldn't want to lug that around to gigs but definitely like no, but for studio, studio. Oh. <laughs> yeah yeah i totally get it man. <laughs> yeah, man. uh what were so you said uh how's the the lyric writing process going? oh that so you, you know sometimes most of the time for me i'll come up with all the music first and i let the music kind of dictate what i'm gonna say lyrically okay like you know like Cause like, uh, that's, that's a lot of times how I, I mean, I've written songs the other way. Like I'll do the lyrics first and then do the music, but I find it much easier to come up with the riff and to come up with the melodies and get all the music and then let the music say what I, you know, think lyrically. And then like a lot of times that's how I do it. And then sometimes I've had it all come into my head at once, really? like, Just you know, and that's where like you're tapping awesome. into something greater than yourself. I yeah, think, yeah. you know? Like, I'd probably sound like a nut. No, but, no, no, no. you know, like, I think, like, you know, sometimes, you know, you get a song, and you get, you know, when you get the hairs stand up on your arms, that's when you know you got something, like, that's when you're like, okay, God's giving me a song here. Yeah, you know? yeah, I got, <laughs> like, I'm going to you know? use this now. Yes, yeah, yeah, I got to use that, and it comes in and hits you like a lightning bolt, and you got to get that down, you got to record it on your phone, and you got to write the words down yeah. immediately. Otherwise, you You're, lose it. It's you gone. lose it. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. I have heard people talk about, well, I if I don't remember it the next day, then I must not remember what I'm like. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been like, oh, why didn't I record that real quick? No, yeah, yeah. Even if the next morning you, you wake up and you're like, that, that's bad. Yeah. I don't know what I'm thinking. Most, most of the time, I do come up with all the music, but m mainly my writing process, I'll come up with the music first and the chord progressions and the melodies. Mm -hmm. And it's like, since I learned so many uh, instrumentals from like Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed, a lot of my writing, and like generally my riffs will contain the vocal melody within the guitar riff, really you sick. know? Yeah, I guess so, I didn't notice that with some of the songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about I'm Okay. Yeah. Um, there's another release just back at the end of March. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say, it, it reminds me of uh, Clashing with some ACDC. It had some, like, ACDC. Yeah, I went for kind of ACDC guitar tones. That's so sick. I loved it. Yeah. It wasn't, it was like that was my tip of, yeah, tip of the hat to Angus too. Young, my first rock guitar hero. I love Angus, man, yeah. you know. Yeah, and... Uh, Kind of went for that with the tones. I used it. I didn't use an SG on that. I maybe I should have used an SG. No, but I, 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 I like used my telly that. and I used a Gibson ES335, which was Curtis's guitar in the okay. studio. He has a good selection of guitars, so I used those two. I used uh, the telly for some rhythm as well as the ES335 for some rhythm to kind of get like a Angus and Malcolm sort of thing going, yeah, you know. That, yeah. And then the the lead tone. I dialed in the lead tone with the Gibson ES335, and that got a similar kind of tone to the SG, you know, mm -hmm. kind of that. There's a twangy bite, but it's hollow, and there's feedback, and, you know, yeah, that kind of big, yeah, yeah, big it's, sound. It's like a rocket. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, man. sure. A lot of double stuff. Like, this is on a clean tone with the telly, so you don't, you know, <laughs> forgive me, but, like, you know, that kind of. There we go. I'll crank yeah. it up. Dude, Except it'd be so way more dirt than that to get the Angus thing dude. going, you know, and that kind of. Dude, that's sick, man. You know. Very cool, man. <laughs> Blown away. Seriously, it's, it's insane. Um, what was the meaning behind the song? Did you have a, a uh, purpose? Lyrically, that one was kind of a, about a guy kind of going a little insane, but he's in denial that he's going insane. I could. <laughs> it's kind of dark, but to, it see, like dark. that's yeah, I mean, it's kind of dark. But like the the music kind of gave me that feeling, though. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so I it's like because like it was one of those things where I came up with the music first before uh -huh. I did the lyrics. So I let the the music kind of had this creepy, you know, the riff. And then this. So 
so cool. That dropping. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know that kind Dang of thing, you know? <laughs> Remember, remember me at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in this interview. <laughs> That's on a clean town, but in the studio, yeah, it's got all it the dirt in the bike. Dirt, man. Yeah, you guys got to check it out. I'm yeah. okay. That's a rocker. Yeah. That's a rocker. Bar burner. Bar burner. Bar burner. <laughs> Seriously, man. We lit the whole field on fire. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about, let's see, the next one. Oh, the uh, Wasted Mind is a Waste of Time. Yes. It's a. It's got a great bluesy track. Yeah, it's got some yeah. Swing. And there's a, a couple changes, up, changes towards the end of it, I feel like it... It uh, feels like it rotates a little bit at the end of that. Is there? A, tell me about that songwriting process. That one definitely, definitely went for a bluesy vibe, and th- and that one was totally like I was definitely thinking along the lines of ZZ Top and Billy Gibbons for sure for I the guitar tones, yeah, you yeah, know, totally. And it's got the swing, you know, the kind of the shuffle and the swing, and uh, and this kind of boom gang. That, I came up with that riff and I was like, oh, that's got a cool, like, laid back kind of yeah, yeah. vibe, you know? So uh, I'm not going to play it because I don't remember it. And I got <laughs> to I gotta re, I gotta relearn my own songs I composed. <laughs> I've done you know, that. I haven't practiced that in a while. Yeah, but like, you're going to listen to it. And, uh, but um, yeah, that, that riff just totally had that kind of laid back, Texas kind of swampy. Yeah, vibe it's, it's and like that, for sure it's got that stank you know it is. and uh and so that was totally a tip of the hat to to gibbons yeah, there yeah. but it's like you know at the same time it's like i ain't going to sound exactly like him obviously because no, no, no. i got so i mean i got so many different influences running through me <laughs> so yeah, yeah. it's like You're you know like a melting pot of yeah yeah there. so it's like you know like so i'll i like to blend it all you know, try my best to tastefully blend it all, you know, to I the best of my abilities. Yeah, yeah, I think you do great, man. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, tell me about the the lyrics behind that song. Okay, so that one, the lyrics behind that song, Wasted Mind is a Waste of Time, is talking about, you know, how getting drunk's basically a waste of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in a there nutshell. And I wrote that when I was, like, super, super, you know, under the influence of, Alcohol <laughs> in uh, 2017, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm sober like now, but great, you know, man. yeah, I'm like 440 days sober. Oh my gosh! But yeah, I wrote I wrote that when probably like you know at the height of my addiction, really? <laughs> you know, which is kind of like contra- kind of a contradiction, really. Well, I feel like uh, that helps with the process of, of yeah, of, it, got, of it helped me get in. it out, and then I finally got sober. So that song has a special meaning, you know. Yeah. And it's it's but it's not a uh, it's not a depressing song at all. It's it doesn't kinda, feel that way. Yeah. Nah, it's got that cool riff and that laid back Texas vibe, kind of a jaunty sort of thing going. And it's uh, it's like talking about like how like you know like you get your shit together. You yeah, know? let's get it going. <laughs> let's just man. get Come your on. shit together. You know, and I finally I wrote the song in 2017, and it wasn't until three years later that I got my shit together. And I'm sorry, pardon my French, but I'm still I'm still working on that day by day. It's a day. That's by great, day. man. So I need from alcohol is a day by day thing. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that hey. song and that was, that song was inspired by personal experience for sure. That's really cool, man. Yeah. Inspirational, uh, inspirational. Yeah. You're inspirational, man. Yeah. Um, okay, the last one I want to talk about. We got about ten minutes left. Yeah. I want to talk about this. Uh, big love cover oh, that you put yeah. on. I. So here's the God's honest truth. Uh, was it Tango, Tango in the Night by uh, Fleetwood Mac? Mm-hmm. I think it's from that album. I remember listening to that album after going through a deep dive, and I was like, I, just, I, I don't love this album. And then I listened to your cover. I know, it's a blast for me. Man. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then I listened to your cover of it, and I went back, and I was just like, I don't know what I was thinking, because this is a great album. Like, <laughs> front to back, it's crazy. Yeah, it, yeah. It's definitely... To me, it feels different than some of their other stuff. Like the Rumors album and stuff. Yeah, you know? that's when, when I think Fleetwood Mac with that era. That era, yeah. That yeah. era of Fleetwood yeah, Mac. Yeah, because you got 60s Fleetwood Mac was total it's blues rock. Yeah. Peter Green. Yeah, you know, Peter Green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what a weird 
and strange trip that's been. Yeah, been yeah. Past. They evolved a lot over they the years. They did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so listening to the, but then I, I listened to your track and I was like, what the? That's not, I don't remember the song. Like yeah. And then I went to see the live, or I heard the live version of it and I was just like, oh, this is yeah, this yeah. more like this. And then I went back because of that, mm-hmm. I went back and listened to the whole album. Yeah, right yeah. Right after I sent you all those questions, I was like, this, yeah. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So, this yeah, is such a good album. The song Big Love uh, the, by Fleetwood Mac, you know, it's definitely got like an 80s pop, the, the, uh, the album version, the album version has the like 80s pop, pop, pop with the with the song. snare, the gated reverb on the snare, and yeah, that was what was hip at the time. Yeah, I, it seems, you know, t- of a it's like a, a stamp. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, oh, yeah. Time like, stamp, yeah, for sure. Stamp. Versus the live version, and your version. To me, yeah. I feel like you could release the song today, and it's still like this is extremely. Yeah, relevant. it's like yeah, it feels like sometimes it feels like songs are kind of trendy for what's trendy at the moment and a timestamp thing like we're like you know the rumors album i feel like a lot of those songs are timeless they are yeah. the, those are timeless the the when you listen to the album version of big love when they released that in the 80s that's definitely like oh that's the 80s that's for the 80s. sure no it's a great no song, doubt no doubt the 80s, yeah. yeah and um the live version i always gravitated more towards the live version when it was just Lindsey Buckingham and his nylon guitar mm-hmm. and the energy he brought cuz he plays it faster Oh, yeah, much it's, faster it's live, live yeah. and it's more rocking and it's just yeah. him on an acoustic guitar but it rocks so when i recorded this version i wanted to have drums and bass but i wanted to capture more of the energy yeah. of his live version of it you know and i also you know you got to make it, you know make it my own it and didn't feel like a ripoff yeah for no sure. no i wanted to make it my own i threw i threw in some kind of bastardized flamenco guitar <laughs> on the nine line. Yeah, I'm not a legit flamenco player. That's a total, that's another whole ball game. Those flamenco players, they totally. use their two fingers and their thumb and they, <laughs> God, you know, they're amazing. But I, I bastardized crazy. flamenco. I'm more, I'm, I come from the country finger picking background. So it's like, it's like country flamenco. But, <laughs> country you know, flamenco. yeah, yeah. That's an <laughs> album right there. Yeah, yeah. Flamenco. But it's, uh, you know, like I, I, I did a little bit of that and then uh, the drums, you know, like, I had Eric do a disco beat, and there's this mm. kind of breakdown in the middle where it's like a halftime, but he's doing these tom fills, and and Eric's a great drummer. I love that guy, and it was my friend Forrest on electric bass. Mm-hmm. My friend Jenny Jarnigan did the beat three on it, and uh, that was a blast to record that. It was uh, it was fun. That was with Curtis as well. That was at Kurt. Yeah, that was with Curtis at uh, STEM recording, and that that's is an awesome it, studio. Just a phenomenal cover. You got everything that you're cranking out. I'm just blown away. <laughs> I just, I'm excited. Oh, thanks, man. Would you, you're working towards an album drop? Yes. Yeah, I've released, I believe I've released like four singles now. I think, yeah. I think so. I think I four think so far. <laughs> yep, yep. Three originals and the one cover. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to release one more single, and then I'll release the whole album. And the whole album will be like... 10 songs i believe it's 10 originals and then the one cover dude that's sick man. and i, I i've got other projects i'm working on too because i'm a nut <laughs> you know i got i got like three albums in the work but this oh my gosh. this three th- yeah that's so much yeah. music man it is it's it's a lot i'm never gonna do it again no like, yeah, yeah, after yeah. after i finish these other two albums i'm like from now on i'm like i'm doing singles yes. or i'm doing eps yeah or maybe one true. album i'm not gonna do three in one it's so that's like it's daunting it's dude. dumb yeah, yeah. It's dumb. It's just, just, i don't know why i did that you just got all this backlog <sighs> stuff you can't do it's a horrible idea yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah you know it's fun though you know <laughs> uh, it's yeah. that's the thumbnail right there that, yeah. that's a horrible this is, <laughs> don't ever record don't three do albums <laughs> at once it's dumb don't ever do it yeah <laughs> that, that's the advice right there that's the advice okay uh man we skipped through some of this stuff yeah uh, i loved everything I, I i'm i've been having a good time man. okay let's talk about where people can see you play oh where, yeah where they where can people go find so you? like i got a regular gig at uh the farish house and that's uh every tuesday that's in downtown phoenix on third street and roosevelt and it's a uh, little uh historic home that my friends converted into a restaurant it's like got a brick patio and it's it's really it's cozy delicious food it's Lori is the owner and her husband eric is the guy who drummed on my album no way yeah so it's that's kind of cool man i think i do remember you telling yeah, me that yeah yeah I, I, so i, I play there every that. tuesday another place i play at saddle mountain brewing company and that's out kind of on my side of town where i live in goodyear 
Uh-huh. I, I live out in uh, Rainbow Valley, Buckeye, Arizona, so I'm like 15, 20 minutes from Goodyear. Uh-huh. So I play at Saddle Mountain, and then I play at uh, local Johnny's in Cave Creek mm-hmm. uh, pretty often. Those are like probably the main three, gigs three where spots where like you can catch me, you know, and and then uh, and then uh, Mr. Lucky's. That's also that's like right behind the Ferris House. I play playing. I got some dates there. That's awesome. And do a lot of solo gigs, and then I do like trio gigs with Tristan on upright bass, and he's a monstrous bass player. Monstrous. Bass and then my friend so Todd monstrous. on drums. Uh, Need to meet this guy. Yeah, I've got yeah, I've got like. I know, there's so many damn good drummers around. There really are, man. <laughs> it's like, it's insane. Matt, but like, Pablo. I, yeah, yeah Matt, Pablo. Too. And then there's other guys like uh, Buddy Banks. There's mm-hmm. Fred Boswell. I mean, there's some, those guys are monsters. Yes. LT Green. I mean, some of these guys I've met personally. Some of them are just like Facebook acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. My friend Aaron Hamalderson. I think I said his last name right. <laughs> you know, there's so many damn good drummers. And I'm Matt. With Matt. Yeah, yeah and but like Danny, definitely, uh, I love Robinson, Eric and Todd. Too, I'm, I'm maybe I'm biased towards them. I don't know, but like, they're every drummer's got their own thing, man. Yeah. They're all good. They're all good. They all got their own touch, and I and I love working with with them because I'll be like I'll be. That's one thing too when I'm writing a song. I'm thinking about the guitar tones and who's going to play the bass on it and who's going to play the drums. Because yeah, like yeah. a lot of my songs when I'm composing and I'm, and I'm writing them and I'm doing the pre-production in my head, I'm already thinking of, ooh, this song's this perfect for Todd. Todd. Or this song's perfect for Eric. Or yeah. this song's perfect for this. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? So I, I love doing that, getting different. different. I love characters in music. Mm-hmm. And I love y- using... You know, my if there's a guitar part that I can't play, I have no problem whatsoever, like, calling my buddy Tom Mine uh-huh. and, like, hey, I want you to play on this song, guitar sweet. on this song, or yeah. my friend Bill Dutcher, or my friend Mike Gallagher, or my friend uh, Richard Smith, who's yeah, yeah. probably the best. Uh, you know, Dean thinks I'm, you know, great at finger-picking, bleh. Check out Richard Smith. That's the real deal right that there. Guy's got <laughs> that's that's guy, I gotta guy, check him out, man. That guy plays Scott Joplin tunes on guitar. Wow. And that's like that's nutty. I can't do that. That's, that's nutty. nutty. That's yeah. nuttier than squirrel shit. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so man. funny, man. Yeah. Uh where can they follow you on social uh platforms? No, oh, you mainly like Facebook and Instagram. I'm not I'm not on Twitter or TikTok. I have a I have a hard enough time with Instagram and Facebook, so those are like if you wanna follow the madness, then uh, those are the those are the go to's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right there. I love that man. Uh what uh let's see, I had one more question. It's out of out of so, so uh what do you feel like so far is the best work that you've done? And if looking back, oh, let's let's start that because that's God, the man, question. I would say like this album that I'm releasing right now is definitely just some of the best rock stuff I've done as far as like, uh, just the songwriting and the chord progressions and the melodies and the grooves and the guitar tones. I put so much time into the pre-production, yeah. and like, uh, and my vision pretty much came to life. And some of the songs became even better than what i even envisioned that's awesome and it was just like working with the players uh was a breeze you know forest mm-hmm. towers on electric bass and me and forest have known each other since we were five and four years old that's crazy and he man. started playing bass right when i started playing guitar uh-huh. and he just became real damn good you know his flu- influences on bass were like steve harris from iron maiden and flea from red hot chili peppers mm-hmm. and and he's got his own touch on on, I mean, and Forrest, he, he's a great bass player because he comes up with melodic bass lines that suit the song. Yeah. Like, I hardly ever had to tell him what to play for a part, ever, ever. He just comes up with these great, catchy lines. It's like John Deacon from Queen or something. Those yeah. bass lines are amazing. They you are know? so good. And Chris Squire from Yes, you know, and Getty, Getty Lee from Rush. It's like John Entwistle from The Who. It's like mm-hmm. Forrest is like a rock bass player that he's just got his own twiddle in his fingers he sounds like him you know i've never heard a bass player there's a lot of bass players today you know that are very great technically and they and some of them have their own voice some of them sound like each other but forrest he's got something in his fingers that he sounds like him yeah it's just yeah he's great that's really cool to to see somebody put that much effort into that and -hmm. and and, you know and do the role of the bass player you know because like Forrest, he's got he's got some chops and he could do solos if he want wanted to, 
but um, he doesn't really like to do bass solos. He's done a co- he did one bass solo on a song called "Friends Will Remain," but he he composed the solo note for note. Really? So it wasn't like it wasn't just an improvised so, really? bullshit memory muscle memories kind of stuff. It was like he's like he likes to compose his solos uh, on bass whenever he does them, which I totally respect. I think that's cool. I think that's Sometimes really cool. I compose guitar solos for my songs. Uh, I love improvisation though too. So a lot of times I'll improvise off of the groove. But like mm-hmm. Forrest, he likes to. It's like you know, it's like Brian May, his guitar solos in Queen, he composed. A lot of them, you know, mm-hmm. so, and that's why they're so that's memorable tasty. And, that's and tasty. Yeah, okay, and that's that Forrest one. with his bass lines and his bass solos. It's like you can remember every lick and note, and it's melodic and it's going somewhere, man, you know. That's and that's what good. I love about him, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that man. Uh, well, Seth, I think that's everything. I really appreciate yeah. you being <laughs> on this show. You have been phenomenal. My jaw. It feels like it's been dislocated for me on the floor the entire time. Uh, you want to play us out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I play and sing a little? Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Be sure to follow Seth. Come check him out. The handsome devil. The troubadour. Oh, well. See, I got a woman way over town. That's good to me. Oh yeah, say I got a woman way over town. That's good to me. Oh yeah, she give me money when I'm in need. Yeah, she's the kind of friend indeed. Say I got a woman way over town. That's good to me. Oh yeah. She says I love him early in the morning. You thought me. Oh yeah. She says I love him early in the morning. Oh, she saw me. Oh yeah. Says I love him. Mm, you saw me and I see he love me so tenderly. Say I got a woman. Way over town, that's good to me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Always treats me right Never running in the street Leaving me alone She knows a woman's blessed Cause I'm dead not in a home I got a woman Way over town That's good to me Oh yeah Say I got a woman Way over town That's good to me Oh yeah she might be fair, don't you understand? Yeah, and I am a lover, man. Yeah. Say I got a woman way over town. Just good to me. Whoa, yeah. We don't know she's all right. We don't know she's all right. We don't know she's all right. Oh, yeah. Say I got that woman. She's way over town, but I don't know where the address is. <laughs> <laughs>